Welcome to this review of the DuraTool Model D006748 Watt Soldering and Rework Station. Now, right from the beginning, I'm going to tell you that I have no association with DuraTool, the company I bought it from, or anything else. Um, this has arrived on my desk, and I'll review it as I see it, and that's it. I'm just going to give you my honest opinion. Uh, what I hope to do is do a follow-up to this in a few weeks time when it's got a few miles under it just to see how it lasts. A lot of things work great on the day they arrive and then fall apart afterwards as has happened with the last two soldering irons I've bought. So a bit more money has been spent and we'll see what happens. So I would like to say that this started out well um, but it didn't. This time I decided to be a good boy and read the manual all the way through and make sure that as I put it all together I did it correctly according to the manual. So, obviously read the safety stuff, there's the picture of the bits you have you get with the kit which we'll have a look at in a minute. And then of course there's how you actually put the whole thing together. And it starts off saying, remove the four transit screws from the underside of the station. So I turned the station over and I discovered 18 screws, all looking identical. No indication which was the transit screw. So unfortunately I had to contact the supplier on the first day to say, hey guys, which ones are the transit screws? Thankfully they were quick in their reply, probably because I was threatening to send it back and uh, their reply came back there are no transit screws the unit has been redesigned and no longer has them so for a start off this review is going to start with a bit of a thumbs down because if it, the first line of the instructions on how to put it together are wrong that doesn't inspire hope going forward but we'll give them a chance and we'll see how it goes so uh, rather than you watching me take it out of the box, who wants to see that? I will admit it came extremely well packaged. Um, in fact, getting it out of the box was a bit of a pain at times. You know, completely surrounded by well-fitting foam, a uh, box inside a box. It did come well packaged and uh, I've now taken all the bits out and I've put them on my workbench. So we're going to swap over to a very poorly made video that I'm going to do on my phone and we'll go through the individual parts and I'll tell you what I think of them. Okay, here we go. This is what you get in the box. Now, when I unpack this, the first thing that shocked me, of course, is the size of the unit. Uh, this is a bit of a beast. And to give you a little bit of a, a heads up, that is what, 220 millimeters across it's got a depth of about 220 millimeters again taking into account the slope and it stands probably 160 millimeters high so it is a big big unit initial views the front looks pretty sturdy pretty tough stuff it's got protective uh, film over the screens the connections look pretty tough this is steel uh, this is uh it's tough stuff it's it's well made so uh certainly that unit on the outside is well made now it comes with various bits and pieces we'll start with the manual already had a thumbs down for that two leads UK plug socket and a European plug socket, which obviously I haven't even bothered getting out of the packet. Um, soldering iron. Interesting, the soldering iron it comes with you know, protection over the tip, as in fact does the rework gun. Now, we've all seen soldering stands, you know, you get these things. Um, obviously, these two bits will just clip together. However, this one actually screws together. And something else about this soldering stand, it weighs a ton. That is cast. 
yeah that is heavy so i like that to me at least that's not going to be tipping over because if you're like me it's very easy to knock over some of these lightweight ones moving along we've got the the desoldering gun um, plastic body is it going to last who knows one thing i have noticed is spares for this thing are quite cheap um there is the holder for the desoldering gun that fits into the side here again very well made yeah, this is a tough piece of metal here some spares for the desoldering gun those are a couple of spare nozzles and uh, one big filter which goes in the bottom and then the three smaller ones that you see here they actually go in the back of the gun this is the place where any solder that's sucked out will finish up here we have three basic uh, ramrods they are used to declog the nozzle and then this little bit is the connector or washer and this is where the suction pipe for the desoldering gun plugs in now as i'm trying to uh, do this video on a phone i'm not going to try and assemble the whole unit one-handed but my initial thoughts on the product apart from the manual which definitely got a fail so far is that it seems to be a pretty tough piece of equipment the main unit weighs a huge amount and that heavy soldering iron holder sort of gives me a little bit of confidence that someone's put some thought into what they're building i've at least got some metal for my money so uh, i'm going to end this now and i'm going to assemble the unit and then we'll come back to it well the unit's in one piece um, the holder on this side again quite a strong metal holder just slides into a clip on the side um, the attachments for the soldering iron cable and the desoldering gun those are really nice fitting sockets I, I was impressed with them decent quality the other good thing is this plug is four pin this plug is six pin you cannot get it the wrong way um, one little tip if you put the rubber tube on before you tighten up the the cap you then need to sort of unwind the gun a bit to get the tension out of the rubber hose before you then do up the desoldering cable nothing major um, the only other thing that I noticed putting it together bizarrely was the mains cable um, the mains cable you know it's a decent length I have got a longer one and I was just thinking about changing it for a longer one that I've got but there's something quite odd about this mains cable it might sound weird it feels a really decent quality and uh, I don't know if you can see it there is actually a cable specification on here um, it seems to be pretty decent stuff so it's an HO5RR-F cable obviously it's got its size on there um, when I looked up what that cable means basically it's designed for this sort of appliance so uh, for marks to them for even using the right sort of cable to attach the thing so uh, I'm going to leave this now and I'm going to plug it in and see what happens okay welcome back it's time to turn it on I'll be honest I have turned it on once before and that's why there's been a bit of a gap while I waited for the soldering iron to cool down because I wanted to if you like display how quickly it warmed up so here we go soldering iron on wait for it here we go
So that's a reasonable speed for it to heat up. Um, you change it centigrade to Fahrenheit. Put the temperature up. And that looks a little bit odd to me that it's saying 260 when I've set it for 172. That's not so clever. Oh, it's cooling down. Okay, it's going in the right direction. That's fine. One thing I did notice uh, when I tried to let the soldering iron cool down earlier was it takes a long time to cool down. Um, it's actually... Yeah, it's not a lightweight. It's, it's not a heavy weight. But uh, it feels reasonably well made. I'd love to show you me soldering, but the idea of soldering one handed while holding a phone, that is never going to work. Um, obviously, we can turn the rework gun on as well. And I assume this will heat up in the same way. I imagine it's at 25C to start with because that's about the temperature in this room today. It's cooking here. So as we can see the soldering iron has now reached the correct temperature. And that looks to be holding pretty steady. As you can see the, uh, the rework gun is going up at a steady rate as well. So what I'm going to do now is I've got myself an old circuit board and I'm going to take, I've been taking components off this so I'm going to take a couple of components. I've decided to try for some of those big soldering items on the edge and then I'm going to try a couple of little items. Then I'm going to have a go at a little bit of soldering and I'll get back to you and tell you how I got on. Okay, we're back to the review. I've uh, done a little bit of soldering, just a couple of connections, and I've removed some items. Um, I must admit the, the rework tool does a very good job. Um, these MOSFETs, well, they were off in moments. Uh, the, um, the two resistors yeah, you know, it whipped them straight out with these thicker pins on this type of connector. It was a little bit more of a struggle. It seemed to have no problem sucking the solder out, but unfortunately the pins themselves are a very tight fit in this particular sort of circuit board that I was getting them off. So no fault for the desolderer. Um, and, you know, it took a little bit more effort, but it's come off and they are all, they are all completely usable. Uh, the only issue I had, it's not a major issue, just looking at the soldering iron tip. Um, I build model railways and enjoy a bit of robotics and obviously you can, you know, I have to build up various circuit boards and things for this. And the one issue that I did have, just looking at that tip again, I would have liked a slightly pointier tip. So I'm going to see if they actually do a, a tip that is a slightly different shape. It's quite usable, but what I was thinking of is some of these stuff that I model uh, when I'm trying to solder something inside a loco. There's not a lot of space and sometimes the components are very tiny and tight together. So a slightly thinner tip would probably be an advantage. But apart from that, I must admit, I've been impressed so far. Okay, so uh, 
the end of this review, what have I got to say about this item? Well, we we'll start with the downsides first. So the first one is obviously sort that manual out. You know, I wasted a day in setting up just because I was trying to find out that the transit screws that I'm supposed to remove don't even exist. So that was a little bit annoying. Um, the next one is a an annoyance I find with a lot of pieces of equipment like this spare part numbers you know I, I just decided before I finished I would look up the price of spare parts which incidentally seem to be quite cheap but I just wish these manuals would have a list of the part numbers to otherwise you you're endlessly looking on the internet to find these things I have found them they are available but it would have been a nice thing to have um, the next item this isn't a cheap soldering station uh, at the same time it's not stupid money either but at this price I think it would have been nice to have had a couple of alternate soldering iron tips there are alternate um, desoldering tips but a couple of other soldering iron tips would have been nice at this price and judging by the price of the spare parts wouldn't have bankrupt the company to have done it uh, one final thing um, I build model railways um, ro robots and stuff like that one of the things I've got to say about this soldering iron station it, it is not portable this is going to stay on my workbench. This isn't going to be something, if I'm building a model railway, this isn't going to be the soldering iron I use to crawl under the layout and uh, fix something underneath. You know, it's just not designed for that, and it's just something you need to be aware of. Um, and at the same time, not only is it not portable, it is reasonably large. I'm not going to complain about that. There's lots of stuff in there by the weight of it, but just be aware it does take some desk space up now the positive sides um, it heats up well and it holds heat uh, when I was soldering I wasn't getting that thing that you sometimes get when you're soldering something that's bigger where you touch the item and the irons losing heat it, I didn't have that problem at all and the desoldering well yeah that was just sucking the solder out and it was staying at a nice temperature it's robust you know it it feels pretty heavy duty to me and the bits that I would say possibly feel a bit weaker um, although it certainly hasn't fallen apart if anything would be the desoldering gun um, but that said the spare parts are so cheap I would imagine I'm going to get more than my money's worth out of that item, so uh, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. Going with the weight, I must admit I find it nice to handle. Um, not too heavy, not too light. It might sound weird, I like a, a slight bit of weight in a soldering iron because I like a little bit of momentum in it, if that makes sense. I find it helps me to keep my hands steadier. Yeah. I'm not no spring chicken anymore so I found that a useful thing uh, the other thing as well just before I finished this review was I did look up spare parts because there's nothing worse than buying a piece of kit like this the soldering tip wears out and you can't get hold of them that really does my head in so I've looked up the spare parts and they are readily available through the company that I bought it from you know I bought it from some company called CPC I think it was um, but you can go on eBay and the parts are available on there as well so from my point of view that gives me a peace of mind and the parts are all at very good prices um, you, know, you can replace the entire uh, soldering iron for not much more than I was paying for cheaper nasty ones online from eBay so that to me is a good thing so that's sort of the end of this review um, I'll hope to do a follow-up in a couple of months time we'll see if it's still going as well as it is now on the whole I'm impressed with it apart from that the most irritating bit being the manual everything else has gone exactly as it said it should so we'll see how it goes so if you want to buy one they seem okay to me 
what else can I say? Thanks for watching.